Right, so there's quite a lot of things we need to discuss with regards to the prac. The first thing I want you to know is it's supposed to be hard. If it's difficult, um, just trust me, it's worth it to go through the pain uh, to learn what you need to learn from this module. So almost all students have gone through this and they've gone through the pain of learning what needs to be learned and demonstrating the design skills. Um, it's not supposed to be easy. If it, if it were easy, everybody would be doing it. But engineers get paid a lot and we love the problems. So please don't give up, just keep trying and um, we will get there soon enough. Okay, so the first thing I wanna quickly discuss is the voltage regulators. So the voltage regulators, I want you to assess two voltage regulators. The one is the linear voltage regulator and the other one is the switch mode or also called a switching regulator. And they both take in a high voltage and then they all both have an output voltage where in our case this one is configurable if I remember the one that I gave you um, but in essence you have to design it to give out 5 volts and 5 volts and you're going to take in 9 volts or a smidgen left, less than 9 volts and you have to then assess them for suitability for the purpose that we have so in the case of the linear regulator it is uh, it's designed in such a way that the current that flows in here and the current that flows out there is very similar it's 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 not far apart which essentially means that this regulator here it's not exactly the same but it's almost as if it is putting a resistor in here and this resistance changes depending on what this output voltage is such that the output voltage is maintained at 5 volts. Now the consequences are that this thing generates quite a lot of power because essentially if you consider the voltage uh, here is 9, the current in is a certain value, this current is more or less the same but it's at 5 volts Obviously, there's a voltage drop happening here um, and at that, at that current level, uh, let's call it I out and I in. I in and I out is more or less the same. So the power that you drop or disappear across here will be V times I and this will be uh, whatever that voltage drop is, is 4 volts times I. So you have a lossy component here. So in terms of power, these aren't great at all but the positive thing is there's very low noise levels here so the negative or the disadvantage is power the positive or the advantage is typically that the noise is quite low it's also pretty cheap i have to add so that's a linear regulator then in terms of a switch mode regulator that I've drawn here, you can see um, I've, I've simplified it significantly. You can go and have a look at the data sheet to see the complexities regarding this. But the way this switch mode regulator works is it basically sucks juice. It's like it's switching all the time and it's sucking juice from the nine volts, causing these surges, if you want, of current draw and then pumping it into a big capacitor that sits here. And this big capacitor, uh, the voltage is also fed back into here to, to adjust how much current it sucks. But this then uh, adjusts the switching to supply uh, the voltage level here. So depending on how much current you, you draw, it adjusts the switching to keep this level at five volts. So you can immediately hear from the words that I'm choosing to, to use here, uh, is that it will only draw as much current from the 9 volt, this I in, will be only as much as is needed to supply the I out. So the I in at 9 volts, the I in at 9 volts will be less than the I out at 5 volts, such that the power is more or less equivalent. So P in is more or less equal to P out. In fact, these things are typically 85 to 95% efficient. The efficiency, um, the efficiency here is very much dependent on the voltage drop and the current draw. So the efficiency here is quite good, but unfortunately these big current draws, these 
quick jerky current draws which in your case happens uh, in the order of 50 kilohertz and that's pretty quick but that causes a noise effect so the positive for these things is high efficiency the negative is that they introduce a lot of noise and i guess if you want to the cost and complexity because you suddenly sat with big capacitors a few uh, additional circuitry around here as well um, so the cost and the complexity here this is really simple so another positive is it is simple and it's cheap cost and complexity um, yes yeah, so that's the voltage regulator and what i want you to what i want you to give me is to show me that you measured these things with the simulation so build this the two circuits and then compare the two so show me for the one this is the current draw this is the voltage in this is the power in and for the other one this is what it is and then compare the two noise levels it's very important that when you compare the noise levels um, with your with your measurement that you zoom in sufficiently to show these noise effects on the um, switch mode regulator it's not sufficient to just show this if your scale is let's say five volts per division you want to go all the way into let's say 20 millivolts or whatever it is on the simulator so that you can see the ripples and demonstrate and justify your choice there are many different types of amplifiers i'm not going to repeat all of them here but I want you to go and Google it. I'll, I'll share a link now for a, a very nice overview online of, of the different types of amplifiers and how they can be used. And, and when you consider what you need for your temperature circuit, do think about all of those circuits that are available to you. Because essentially what these things do, if, I, if, I just, if, if you allow me to speak pretty generically, what these things typically do is they apply an alpha or a gain and then if you, if you use them properly, they can also give you an offset. So in your case, you'll have to use some kind of an op-amp circuit to provide an offset and to also provide an alpha gain. So think, think about that when you look through the typical circuits that you need to use. Um, another important thing to consider is with these op-amps, you have two main types um, of op-amps. You have the rail-to-rail -rail op amps, which essentially means that the level here and the level here can come very close. Beg your pardon. Can come very close to the voltage level here and to the voltage level here. The two rails, um, they can both go very high and very low. Uh, in fact, this is less than a volt that it can come from the uh, the negative, and then from the positive typically one volt or so uh, it can come within that voltage rail so that's that's a rail to rail so there's two types rail to rail op amps they give you the flexibility to go quite high and quite low with your inputs with regards to the input on the rails to the voltage supplies at the rails with the 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 other op amp the normal op amp it does not give you the ability to go very close to the negative and very close to the positive so typically you have to stay within one volt to two volts between the levels that you introduce here at those two points and the positive and the negative um, rails so you have to choose which ones to use obviously the rail to rail is more expensive and the normal one is cheaper so in your case this is a tlc2272 and the normal one is a tl081 and the cost of this is typically in the order of 40 50 rand say and this would be less than 10 rand so that's why i also gave you bonus marks if you used any of uh, of these but it's detrimental if you want to go anywhere near the rails now why does the rails why do the rails matter in your case for your op amp i have given you the ability to use only your 5 volt supply which you will be generating from the 9 volts that's the 5 volts and then for the negative rail I have forced you to use the ground so that immediately means that the signals that you introduce into your inputs can't 
go close to this uh, rail voltage if you use the TL081 because the input level here must be substantially different from the voltage level here and the same with that input and if you consider the fact that this is now your negative rail you may want to introduce what is called a virtual ground so essentially what it means is we pretend that this is a negative voltage so negative x and then we generate a new intermediate voltage that we call our virtual ground so if if i were an alien and i were grounded somewhere else i might as well have pretended that just try to follow me here this is a bit sketchy but hopefully you can follow this um i could have pretended that this was plus 2.5 this was neg negative 2.5 and my ground my new ground is then at zero volts conversely if you come back to earth this is then we're back on earth now this is then five volts this is ground and then this thing can be your 2.5 volts positive so you need to generate this and then design your circuit considering what i've just said so the easiest way to do it is pretend you're a martian you're grounded somewhere else and design the whole circuit using these red values that's in that's in essence how i did it design it for the red values and then just convert everything back because our minds are used to working with a ground it makes it a bit more complicated so just define your own new ground the martian ground if you want and then de design the whole circuit for that level i need to say one more thing so one of the biggest challenges you will find when you design this op amp is the limitations on the common mode voltage so the common mode voltage is essentially the average of the voltage here and the voltage here relative to that voltage so it's the mathematically v in plus minus v uh, minus minus v minus that's this voltage here and plus v in minus minus v minus and the whole thing divided by two that is the common mode voltage so you will find that every op amp has a common mode limit you can only go that far and it's quite low it's it's surprisingly low so when you choose this uh, this voltage ground level of yours this this uh, virtual ground level and if you choose any offsetting so if you shift it all you want to consider that you don't go above the common mode voltage of the op amp and you preferably want to demonstrate that in your report too Okay, so the, the next part is just to talk through your first design. So what is this thing supposed to do? Because that's typically what the students struggle with. So let's just look at that real quick. So you have a temperature sensor. Let's draw it like this. This temperature sensor has an output. It's typically, sorry, let me just start over. This typically supplied by five volts and given a ground. And then it gives you out an analog reading. And this analog reading, more or less, I'm just going to gen, gen, generically specify this, more or less it has a zero volts up to five volts. Obviously, that's not accurate. It's typically one, two, three and a half or so. And that typically corresponds to some low value. Let's make it 40 degrees C. And this typically corresponds to a very high positive value. Now, um, this would not be the perfect choice if you had to measure the temperature of a human being, but these sensors go for a rand edge. So it's really, it's really cheap. It's something that you want to use. So it has a full range. Um, if you look at V in to V out, or rather V out and temperature, then it has some graph like that. We are, however, only interested in the range 32 degrees, or is it 34 degrees, bigger problem, 34 degrees to 42 degrees C. 
which means we only want a small fraction here. So we want thereabouts. That's all we're interested in. So your mission is to take a signal that's really minute and to amplify it. But let me just take one step back. So the way that these temperature sensors are typically specified is they tell you at zero degrees C, my output voltage is, and this is for, for cheap sensors, it's typically uh, 0 0.5 volts. And then it says for every volt, or rather for every degree Celsius that it increases, it has a corresponding delta V. And this is normally, it is for one degree Celsius change, there is a 10 millivolts uh, change. And it's normally, like I said here, it's normally a, a, a positive relationship like that there. Um, so in your case, I have changed this value for each student and I've changed this value as well. So each of you will have your own design to do. So the challenge that you have is your circuit must implement, let, let's just say some kind of an op amp circuit. I'm not going to say what, I'm not going to say how, it's just some op amp circuit. It must take in this value here and then it must spit out an, a value that we're going to give to an Arduino. Now an Arduino or any microcontroller typically has ADCs, analog to digital converters. It reads a value from 0 volts up to 5 volts and it converts it to a digital reading of let's say zero to how many ever bits it has. So let's pretend it has 10 bits, one, oh, two, three value. So something near five will correspond to one, oh, two, three, something near zero will correspond to zero digital number. We want to amplify this minute thing here, which I'll, I'll calculate it in a second, which then blows up on this side. And the spec that I've given you is that the range here must be at least 3.2 volts, the range from the minimum to the maximum, where this maximum relates to 42 degrees C, the minimum relates to 30, uh, that's 42 and 32 degrees C. All right, so you can work that back and calculate what the input levels are. But in this case, if you consider, uh, just bear with me one second, I'm just taking that over here. If you consider that at zero degrees C, it's 0 0.5 volts, and we want to work 34 degrees C, then the voltage is 0 0.5 volts plus, and then whatever that delta is, so plus 10 millivolts times, it's 34 degrees above that, so it's 34 minus zero degrees Celsius. So that'll tell you what the voltage input here would be for that. And then the same for 42, you calculate exactly the same. It's just there you put 42. Um, but the big thing is between 32, ah, I keep on saying 32, sorry, between 42 and 34, um, there is a, a nice eight, eight degrees Celsius delta. So that's essentially going to mean, uh, if you consider the delta there, that's essentially going to mean an 80 millivolts delta in, at the input. So let me just change the color so I don't confuse you any more than what is absolutely necessary. So what you're going to get here is an 80 millivolts swing from bottom to top which has to translate through your magic circuitry to those levels. And the other part that I've not mentioned is, obviously at this point here, there is what we call an offset. The offset is whatever your temperature is at 34. So you need to carefully think about two things. The first thing is, how do I remove this offset? What do I need to put in place to put that offset in? The second thing you need to think about is what ampl amplification level do I need to apply to do that from that 
do that. And what is more important at this point, or more difficult at this point, is after you've thought about that and carefully calculated all of it, I'm also telling you that you can only use the voltage rails that I've provided, which then means uh, you need to carefully think about the common mode of this volt, this this op amp, and all other op amps. The common mode limits. You need to carefully think about the input to rail limits that are imposed in the data sheet as well, and you need to carefully think about that in terms of a virtual ground that you're going to generate and in terms of this offset. And that should keep you busy, I think.